Okay, so we clock, uh, get started. You guys good? Awesome. Welcome everyone. Thank you this afternoon's session, uh, four flight session on runway analysis and weight and balance. Uh, a couple of housekeeping keeping items first. Um, we'd like to show this slide at every presentation. It's really how you can get in contact with us. If you need anything around four flights, email us at team at fourflight.com and uh, our team will basically figure out the solution for you or find the right person who knows the answer. But team at fourflight.com is how you can get a hold of us. Uh, where are we at at this show? It's not really hard to find us. Just go to the main aisle and you'll basically run into four flights. We're pretty much smack in the center of the expo hall. So definitely stop by. Uh, any questions you have, we can help you out. We can also make account changes, things like that. Uh, who am I? My name is Michael Vogt. I'm the aircraft performance engineer at Four Flights. Um, I've been an aircraft performance engineer for about 22 years now and uh, started my, my career back at Cessna Flight Test way back in the day. Throughout the years, I worked at a couple of different manufacturers, always combination of aircraft performance with, with uh, software development for aircraft performance calculations and things like that. So naturally it led me to four flights and uh, I joined four flight in 2015. And 2015 is where I wanna take you back to. So on the right side, what you see is our basic performance model. And that still exists today, but in 2015, that's all we had. Your entire climb cruise descent performance was calculated based on eight numbers only. That worked decently well for a Cessna 172, but beyond that, forget about it. So we knew we had to do something about this. And what we did was over the next six years, we kind of consecutively added more and more features and capabilities of our performance. First, we started in the first two years around flight planning specifically. We developed a very capable global planning engine. You can also file with that as well. Um, we started off with 250 aircraft models, and these, these are your high fidelity climb, uh, cruise, and descent performance models with thousands and thousands of numbers, you know, multiple altitudes, temperatures, and weights, way beyond the eight that we had. And as of today, we actually uh, have just surpassed 900 aircraft variants supported on that one. Um, most importantly, and I think in the first two years is our flight's user interface. Our flight's user interface is what you work in within ForeFlight when you do your planning and your performance calculations. So we released that five years ago, roughly, four and a half years ago in May of 2017. And then we expanded upon it. We, we added step climb support, PDC, digital ATIS, uh, rain prediction, we also started takeoff and landing calculations for essentially piston aircraft and turboprop aircraft. Building up on that, we switched over to runway analysis because that was kind of the goal is to provide um, our customers a full-blown runway analysis solution. And in parallel to all that, we also revamped our weight and balance engine completely, which is what we're uh, talking about today is that far right side. So um, the, the runway analysis came out in March of this year, the weight and balance a portion came out literally just yesterday for at least the business performance subscribers, and that's what I want to talk about today. A quick overview of where we're at right now. We, we certify, or sorry, not certify, we support um, Part 25 and 23 certified aircraft, so the whole spectrum. Uh, we have a full fidelity and route performance capability in terms of the models and in terms of the routing and, and uh, filing as well. We um, support runway analysis with custom engine out, design, engine out procedures that we design in-house, and I'll talk more a bit about that later. In terms of operations, we, we support all the standard operations you would expect, 91, 91K, 135 as well. The key is integration. We, we, wanted, we kept hearing from our customers, they wanted a single app solution fully integrated. And that's what we've done by combining route flight planning, runway analysis, and weight and balance, and have them all talk to each other. So what we've achieved is, when you plan your flight, we always make sure you have sufficient fuel to get from point A to point B, including your alternates if you define those, to stay within CG and weight limits, and also to make sure we fit your aircraft on the runway if possible for takeoff and landing. And if not possible, we'll let you know that's not possible as well. We also wanted to provide a freedom of, of workflow. So some pilots like to plan weight and balance before they do runway analysis, others like to do it the other way around. So you have full um, freedom to, to choose your workflow to work with. And finally, besides working on an iPad and your favorite browser on laptop or desktop, we also work on the iPhone. And, and I think, I'm not sure how many, else, uh, how many other um, companies do that out there, but, but it's really handy to, to take out your iPhone minutes before departure and make some last minute payload changes or something like that. So fully iPhone capable. So I'm gonna do something today that I wasn't planning on doing. I, I first, I wanna do some static screenshots, demos, but I decided let's go for a live demo. It's always more fun that way. So. We're gonna do a live demo from Eel County Airports in Colorado um, down to Key West. And 
well, I'm going to step through this live with a Challenger 300. I'm going to go through aircraft setup. I'm going to go through the in-route planning, the weight and balance components to load up an aircraft, and then finally we'll do runway analysis. So let's get started. I'm on the maps page here, and in the lower right corner, we have that more tab. Currently has a one badge on there. It means I have to download something at some point. Um, when I tap on that, it brings up our side menu. The side menu has the aircraft um, item, which is a third from the top there. That's where I go in to set up a new aircraft. So I'm going to tap on the aircraft. And on the left pane, I have all my con previously configured aircraft, but I'm going to start from scratch with a brand new one. And you do that by tapping on that button at the very upper left corner. So go in there, and I have two orange or golden font items. These are the only two required items needed to set up an aircraft. So I'm going to give it a tail number. We'll call it 300 Char Lima. And then on aircraft type, this is where I search on the ICAO code. It's, you, you can search different ways as well, but I find it uh, searching on the ICAO code is typically the quickest here. So for the Challenger 300 at CL30, we have two options here, and they're actually differing only in maximum takeoff weight. Um, as of right now, the bottom one is the one that I'm going to demo with because it supports runway analysis, as we see, and it also has weight and balance templates available. We, we need to update the upper one to, to get to the same parity there. So I tap on the bottom one, and my aircraft is fully configured, fully set up. And in theory, I can flight plan right now. I can go into runway route analysis right now. But what you want to do is you want to go through a few items on this aircraft setup page first to make sure it's configured for your aircraft, and that's quite important. So the first thing you want to do is this performance group here. We have um, six default perform or six performance profiles. These are our cruise profiles. And I can, I can take a look at those by tapping on there. So we have six cruise profiles that are included. This aircraft has one climb and one descent profile. We are adding more um, in the coming weeks and months to different aircraft. But you can go in here, you can do fuel biasing if you want to. If I tap on the climb, for example, I can add fixed time or fixed fuel bias if, if it doesn't really match up with your aircraft. And what we do is here, we, we take the OEM book data. So whatever the aircraft manufacturer has in their books, we model that. And they typically guarantee within plus minus 3%, but aircraft can vary. What's very important for climb though, is you wanna make sure you fly the speed schedule that we have modeled. Um, it's probably the number one thing I see is when people say, you know, our numbers are not matching, it's because oftentimes they're not flying those exact speeds. And we are kind of bound to model the speed schedule that's given to us in the flight planning performance guide. If you fly something else, a different speed schedule that we don't have data for, we cannot model that unfortunately. So, you know, we have grid relationships with the OEMs. I try to get more data, but it's sometimes challenging, quite honestly. But keep that in mind, you can bias fuel and time here if you need to. Um, the next line, runway profile, this is just a generic line telling you, you know, what serial number range is good for, maximum takeoff weight. Oftentimes, there is only one option here, and in this case, there is only one option here. But um, especially on the piston aircraft, you might find a bonanza with six or seven groups of serial number ranges, and you have to select the correct one. So it's, it's more of a piston um, issue to select the correct one than for a jet one. The third one here is fuel performance. You definitely want to dive into this one because this, this has two groups. We have a takeoff group on top, and we have a landing group on the bottom. And what you do in here is you're setting your default aircraft configuration for each and every flight. You can still change it as you plan the flight. But if you have an SOP that has very specific defaults, you definitely want to go in here and change that. For example, rolling takeoff is set to yes. Maybe I never use rolling takeoff, so I can set that to no. And it will always plan our new flights without rolling takeoff considered. Um, the landing factor on the very bottom, we provide the option, you know, the, the, the typical landing factors of 60 and 80% here. And um, when you plan a flight, you can also input your custom landing factor, but maybe your SOP says you always do a dry 15%. So you come in here, select 1.15, and then every single flight that you plan will start off with that 15% factor. Again, you can change it once you plan the flight. The other thing I want to point out here is this also corridor. So part of our engine out procedure is we um, identify obstacles along corridor that is prescribed or defined by FA's AC 120-91A. And um, the ICAO has a similar counterpart document, and the corridor is very similar as well. It's a little bit wider. So depending on your type of operation, um, it, typically if you're an N-registered tail number, you probably have the FAA selected here. If you're a uh, non-N-registered tail, you may have to switch over to ICAO. And that's kind of for you to decide and, and figure out what to do here. But really, you're setting the obstacle um, definition, the obstacle corridor definition within which all obstacles are found. 
But these are all one type settings. And once you have that set, you can kind of move on. So that was it for runway analysis setup. Um, in terms of weight and balance, we have our weights block here. And the, the one thing you definitely want to do is change your basic empty weight to your aircraft. We, we start you off with a value, typically comes from the manual, but it's typically an example value. So be sure to check your weighing sheet and, and make sure you use a correct value here. So I'm gonna go with uh, 24,750. Now on the bottom, that add weight and balance profile, that's a new green button that we have. And this is where you set up your weight and balance profile. Once again, we have two groups. I'm not gonna talk about the bottom group. That is a migration group. If you're bringing um, a, a previously set up weight and balance aircraft from our old system to our new system, you can migrate it over so it works with our new system. That previous weight and balance weight did not work for jets. It was mostly for pistons. That's why you'll mostly see pistons here if you have something set up at all. But the top group we have from templates. Now there are two options for this aircraft. The, the bottom one is a blank template. You would select that if you wanna do all the work yourself. So you're gonna find your weight and balance AFM section. You're gonna be typing in all the numbers to define the envelope, to find the arms and all that sort of stuff. You, you can do that if you want to, but you know, we, we've, we've kind of done that for you. So what we do is we create templates for each aircraft. Uh, for this Challenger 300, when you open up the AFM, they have one cabin layout defined. And that's what we use to create this template with, and it's called double club seating arrangement. So by tapping on that, I, I basically am configuring this weight and balance um, setup for this aircraft with that double club seating arrangement. Now here I do have to define my basic empty weight. Again, it's like to double check to make sure you have the right value, but I can bring it in from the previous screen. And then I must also set my basic empty weight CG. With that done, your entire weight and balance is configured, but it's on you now to go through the different stations and make sure the arm values that are defined here are correct. Because what you should think of is you're, you're using the template to get you started, but once you set up that template, it's on you to, to make it correct and then also maintain it from here on out. And what we have is we, we list the various stations and we use some iconography to say if it's a, a row of seats, if it's a single seat, um, the four little squares, that's aircraft items. And then if I scroll further down here, we have things like fuel and as well as cargo. Um, going further, we define the forward and aft CG limits of the envelope for you. Now, these are all blue values, meaning you can edit those if needed. So this, this comes in quite handy if you have an operation where you're using standard weights with curtailed envelope. So you can load it from the template and then you have to do the curtailment calculations yourself, but then you can come in here and, and shrink down that envelope, curtail it, but also set your standard weights in the settings that you have defined to, to use. Um, for flight operations that, that have like a whole organization structure, um, you can have an administrator manage all this and then lock it away from the crew so they cannot change this afterwards. That, that's also kind of important if, if you wanna have a single person or a small group of people manage it all, that's possible as well. And then finally at the bottom here, um, some aircraft perform or, or prefer some pilots or aircraft, they, they show things in percent MAC. So we finally um, added percent MAC capability as well. Now, the one thing that um, we've always heard a lot about was lack of basic operating weight use. And, and we've solved that as well. If I tap on the flight deck where we have our pilot and co-pilot, I can go in here and I can, can change my row arm for that particular station. But also I, I show, in this case, I have a pilot and co-pilot um, seat on the, along this row. And if I tap on the pilot, I can now include the pilot in the basic operating weight and set a default weight. And of course I can do the same with co-pilot and we're showing the basic operating weight items with this badge BOW, so it's very clear. And you'll also see that on the report that I'll show later. Plus of course I can, you know, I can add seats if I want to. Um, I can swipe, delete these if I want to. So you have a lot of flexibility to set up your, your weight and balance here. Again. The idea is to load a template and then modify it from there. That's kind of what we're hoping for. Now, one thing I want to note is the larger the aircraft, the less likely the manual actually has a cabin layout defined. Um, if you look at the goal streams, if you look at the globals, what we have set is essentially the flight deck and the cargo compartment only because the cabin in between, there are millions of different variants and, and we don't have access to that data. So for those type of aircraft, you'd have to define it yourself or talk to us and we can help you out. So that's it on the aircraft setup really. And, and basically what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna switch over to the flights tab. So on the bottom, we have a flights button and I'm gonna to come to my flights tab. So I'm gonna use um, an aircraft I set up previously. And what I do is I tap on the plus. We're gonna go from Eagle to Key West. 
And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change from this 737, I'm going to actually change this uh, 300 Delta mic. And the only reason is I, I went through that aircraft and I set up all the basic operating weight items on that CG. So the fourth one from the top, I tap on it and I immediately get calculations at the very top. So the very top, we have our header. We list the distance, the time and route, the um, arrival time, flight fuel, as well as the wind here. So that so our, our, our route calculation has already happened. Now, the one thing I want to do is though, I obviously want to set my route. Right now we're using a, a great circle route. So the bottom button here, we have seven routes that have already been fetched for us. I can tap on that and it's going to bring those routes in. It's going to give me an option to select those. And if anyone attended the morning's dispatch, um, it looks very similar to what we have in dispatch. We have a recommended route, we have preferred routes, and then we have ATC cleared routes. And I can tap on any of these here to see you know, their routing on the map as well. Plus we show flight time and fuel calculations, if there's a step climb included, things like that. So the recommended route is typically one that we try to give you the highest possible chance of clear it as file. And that's probably the one you normally wanna go with unless you have reasons not to. One thing I wanna show at the very top that's often overlooked, um, there's like a menu button and zero to 45,000 feet. You can actually tap on that and you can go into route constraints. And route constraints, you can constrain the altitude that you want to search by. Maybe you're not RVSM certified for that flight. You can chop it off at, I think, 29,000 feet or something like that. Um, something else you can do, you can avoid FIRs. That's not so much an issue in the United States, but maybe there are regions around the world, conflict you want to not fly through, or maybe there's a volcano erupting. You can actually tap on that avoid FIR, search on that FIR, and, and it was going to route around it automatically for you. So avoiding that FIR completely. So definitely check out the route constraints if you're not familiar with them. I'm gonna select this route here and um, cruise altitude. We can select another one here. If I bring up the, the altitude advisor, it's gonna pull in the winds. It's gonna give us uh, flight time and flight fuel calculations and showing the winds at the various flight levels. In this case, I'm just gonna stick with uh, 410 and let it be. I'm not gonna talk about diversion planning. We do support equal time points. Um, recommend coming to our booth if you wanna have a demo on that. Um, there are some backend setup required, but it's, it's pretty minimal, but we do support ETPs as well as any kind of um, true ETOPS performance. So now that our flight's been planned, I want to wait, I, I want to add some payload and we, we still have this payload section that we previously had. You can still add number of people with an average weight that works perfectly fine. But really, since you have your weight and balance set up, you want to tap on that weight and balance button and immediately you get your um, solution here. So this is again for just the flight crew that we currently have loaded and all the basic operating weight items. Um, we see our envelope here. I can obviously zoom in on it. I can scroll around. We have our takeoff landing points. We have our fuel burn line. And at the very top, we show the various weights as well. In terms of adding people, it's a matter of tapping on here to get a menu. And um, you can type in your weight manually on top as well as name it if you want to. Um, and if you do that, it will actually be added to the saved load section on the bottom. So I, I added Jack and I added Jill and gave them those names and then they're saved. So if you always fly the same people around, you can assign names to those as well. And I can simply tap on that to um, add the person and it will, show, it will show the person assigned to that seat. Um, we'll add just a few more here. And for those of you wondering about graphical loading, we do, but by that I mean seeing your layout um, with the seats and everything and tapping on seats to load that, we do not support that as of now. It's a common request, we're looking into it, so you know, stay tuned. Um, so yeah, so once, once I have my aircraft loaded up, we'll throw some cargo in here maybe, uh, 400 pounds, whoops, not 4,000. So once I have that loaded up, and actually that's kind of a cool idea, let me, let me throw 1,000 um, pounds here just for fun. And hopefully I'm gonna trigger, um, actually I didn't, yeah, okay. I'm, I'm gonna trigger an error. So this is kind of what it looks like if you actually have an error happening. So on the top it says the takeoff CG is too far forward. The entire outline of the envelope is now colored red. Um, there are some air, aircraft that have certain zones where you cannot hang out in during takeoff, during landing. We include that as well. I know uh, some of the uh, Embraers have certain restricted areas for takeoff and landing. And if you find yourself in that, we will warn on that as well. So we have that capability to check uh, different zones within the envelope as well. So let me clear this out. So with my weight and balance set up now, um, you know, the popular thing to do, the, the required thing to do is to create a summary of that so you can sign it. 
And um, I tapped on, I, I should have mentioned the upper right corner has that summary button. I tapped on that summary button and I, I get basically the summary page, including the signature lines and everything else. And what you can do with that here is um, you have options now. You can actually tap on that and you can do the markup. So if I tap on the markup, I can use my finger and sign it right then and there. But I can also save it to flights. So we have save to flights files. When I tap on that there, it's going to attach this PDF essentially to this flight. And I can still share that PDF around. I can attach it to email, send it to my dispatcher, whatever I need to do. But in this particular case, if I go back one level to flights and I scroll to the very top, we have four buttons there, nav log, briefing, and then that third one is where the file is attached. So if I tap on that one, it brings me any uh, PDF files attached to this flight. And once again here, I can view it, I can sign it, I can use my send to to send it on to someone via email, whatever you need to do. But um, this is obviously built in for, for any kind of record keeping purposes, uh, either locally on your device or synced back um, you know, within your system within ForeFlight. So that's all possible there. Okay, so we, we've, we've planned our, we set up our aircraft, planned our flights, we loaded people up. Let's dive into runway analysis. Um, before I do that real quick, I'm gonna scroll down here. So this is our fuel section. Um, I currently have a minimum fuel policy selected, which is basically enough fuel to get to, to your destination plus your legal reserve, but typically no more. Um, in this case, maybe I'm landing at, at Key West, I'm dropping off passengers and then I wanna fly on to, to West Palm Beach or something. So what I can do is that fuel at landing line in the middle of the screen, right now I have 1,430 pounds. Let's say I want to land with 4,000 pounds in the tank at Key West. So it immediately calculates the fuel load required and it also changes my fuel policy to 11,600 in this case. And on the top, probably didn't see it because it happened so quickly, my flight fuel now increases 7,600 pounds because I'm heavier, I'm carrying more fuel, so I'm, I need to burn more fuel. So we have some very powerful um, fuel policies built in that you can use for, for efficient flight planning and for efficient fuel calculations. Um, tomorrow morning at 9.30, there's a, there's a uh, dispatch 201 class happening right here. And they're actually gonna talk about tankering, which is another new product we support is tankering. So um, be sure to check that out. Um, for those of you doing any kind of special reserve fuel policies, we, we support a whole slew of different type of reserve fuel policies as well. Um, so a lot of capability here around your fuel planning. All right, so with that in mind, I'm gonna scroll now to the very top again, and we have our departure and we have a destination line and you'll see a takeoff button and a landing button. And those are the entry points to the runway analysis portion. So when I tap on, not that. Actually, be before I do this, if, if you're not familiar with Eagle County Airport, um, what I can do is I can tap on the info button just next to that takeoff button. And it's gonna provide me a little information about Eagle County, but I wanna show you real quick what the terrain we're dealing with. So this is our 3D view um, capability. And we're looking at runway, we're standing at the end of runway 25 here. And if you look at the end of the runway, literally two, three nautical miles beyond, you have terrain 1,000 plus feet going up. And if I flip over to runway seven, it's not all that different. The, the terrain is a little further in the back. So what this particular airport has is, if I go to the procedure section, and the departure section. Um, looking at the Jepson charts here, they have the Beaver 1 departure, which is an RNAV departure. And I wanna show this because our, our engine out procedure is actually modeled based off of this departure here. So you, you take off, left turn towards Cooper, Hendes, Beaver, and then Apris. So that's what you're probably gonna have programmed into your FMS to start off with. Um, and as I'll show you in a second here, that's exactly what our engine out departure procedure does because we try to use existing SIDs, existing ODPs, um, and, and model those if possible. We may not take you the full length of an existing SID. We may steer you off into you know, more favorable terrain, put you in a hold there. But um, we, we like to start off, if possible, with an existing SID or ODP because that's what you have programmed into your FMS. So when I switch back to flights here and I actually tap on the takeoff button, right away it tells me takeoff's impossible. So what happened here? So, at the very bottom, it pulled in the METAR because my estimated time of departure is essentially now. So it pulled in now METAR. And it tells me that takeoff's not impossible due to obstacles. And if I look in the runway block here, the departure runway, runway 25 was automatically selected. I can actually tap on here and I can select the other runway if I want to, obviously. But um, in this case, headwind of 17 knots, yeah, I'm gonna take 25. Um, 
But the, the, the way we get around this is we were shown at the very top header, our, our planned takeoff weight is 37,611 pounds, but just below it, we have a maximum calculated takeoff weight of 33,531 pounds and that we're obstacle limited. And the reason we're obstacle limited is because our default is a straight out procedure. Towards the bottom in the obstacle analysis group, you have engine out procedure straight out. If I tap on that, I can select, I can actually view all the custom design procedures that we have. So we show you on the map here what we're dealing with. But then in this case, we have an EOP1 and look at that, it basically follows a SID that I was just showing you on the chart. And with this engine out procedure, um, our maximum takeoff weight has now increased to the full structural limit of 38,850 pounds. We show you a textual description of how to fly that. And again, we show you um, a brief map here, uh, kind of a high level map of what it looks like so you can visualize it better. With that selected now, I get all my result calculations in the header on the top. So for my takeoff weight of 37,600 pounds, uh, it takes my field length about 5,720 feet. I have my V speeds and my level off altitude is gonna be 9,500 feet. And what that one is, um, this is all predicated on losing an engine just prior to V1, deciding to fly, rotate, pitch for V2, fly the procedure, and level off at that uh, 9,500 feet. And then you're gonna be clear of all obstacles and we put you in a hold. So that's kind of what that is all predicated on. This, this is not a TURPS, uh, all engine normal operating departure. It's all one engine operative straight from the AFM performance requirements. I just want to be clear on that one. <laughs> um, little side story. So a colleague of mine, he actually, he's in the QA department. He's heavily involved in doing the quality assurance on not just the engine out departures, but also dispatch and some other performance capabilities. He's also type rated in the Challenger 650. He's been flying that aircraft for 15 years. About a month ago, he went to recurrency training and um, passed all, did a great job. But then he asked the SIM instructor, hey, can we load departure 25 and departure seven of Eagle County in the SIM? So they, they did that. They set up a, a weather temperature scenario and then he used four flight to calculate maximum takeoff weights. And they dialed in that exact weight and he flew both procedures with zero issues. Uh, you know, lost the engine, pitched V2, flew the, the path and everything. Um, it, it's a small data point, but it shows that what we're doing here works. You know, we're, we're combining the aircraft performance with the custom design engine our procedures that we have and, and putting that together. In this case, in the sim, it worked quite nicely. So I just wanted to kind of provide that as a, as a little thought um, point here. Um, I'm just gonna go through the vertical here real quick. So that departure runway group, there's what you expect uh, runway information. This particular runway only has one length in terms of declared distances. So we only show a single usable length of 9,000 feet. If a runway has different distances, different declared distances, we will list Toro, Toda, and Asda individually. Um, in terms of surface conditions, you know, we, we actually uh, have some available here and you can see some are, are blanked out and there are reasons for that too. So we go into the AFM, we look at what combinations of, of aircraft configurations and other inputs provide the option to select a certain runway condition or not. Um, the other thing to note is on the wet here. So most of the information you have here for both takeoff and landing is gonna be actual distance or really whatever's in the AFM. So I'll probably talk more about that on the landing because it makes a little more sense there. But you have options here for different surface conditions and we take the information from the AFM. Um, one thing I failed to mention on the obstacle analysis section, if you want to add manual obstacles, you can do that. Now we do include NOTAM obstacles on a regular basis. And um, the thing is you don't really know if it's included or not. So if you wanna play it safe and you know there's a new crane at the end of the runway, you probably wanna add it in manually. It doesn't hurt if it's in there twice. But um, we're, 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 think, we're trying to figure out different ways of, of be a little more transparent here in terms of the, the pilot knowing what they're dealing with, what's already included, what's not included. But again, you know, when in doubt, add it manually. But honestly, we, we update this every, you know, a couple of weeks or whatever, so I'm, I'm pretty sure recent uh, obstacles will be already included. Uh, in terms of weather, you have full control over it. You know, maybe wind will change. Obviously, you probably wanna update the weather right before taking the runway, so you can definitely go in here and make those changes. And then this section is really the aircraft configuration. And that's kind of what I, I hinted at earlier. So right now we have rolling takeoff at no, because that was my default. I can still change it to yes if I want to here, but um, whatever defaults you previously set, they're gonna show up here. 
Uh, I'm gonna skip the emergency return section because that's the exact same thing as a landing, but the only difference is um, the emergency return section allows an overweight landing. So you find yourself taking off, you wanna go in the pattern and land and you have to do an overweight landing calculation. That's where you would do that. If you do an overweight landing calculation on the landing screen, it's gonna obviously you know, say it's not possible on purpose. And below that, we have our full list of outputs. So the, the header gives you the critical information. Um, the full list of output here will change from aircraft to aircraft, of course, depending on whatever's in the AFM. Um, but we do include things like, uh, for example, the reference climb gradient, that's your second segment climb gradient. That's actually gonna be at the end of the second segment on level off. So it gives you a little bit of an idea of your climb capability, one engine and operative, um, after having gone through the whole procedure. And again, this will change from aircraft to aircraft. And then at the very bottom, we show the full textual description of the engine app procedure. I'm gonna hop one level up and then go into landing. I'm not gonna cover this one in much detail because it's more or less the same thing in terms of the UI, in terms of the flow. But I do wanna say the landing factor here, for example, um, we do show the option for a custom landing factor. And this is a simple multiplier. So if you have an SOP that uses a different multiplier, you can do that. I have learned that some operators do interesting things like add 500 feet, multiply that with a factor. We don't support that yet. Um, you know, in the future, if there's a lot of feedback for that need, we could support that as well. But right now it's a pure multiplier. So surface conditions, what I wanna point out here once again is that especially around wet. Um, you know, if you're doing a 60% wet, you're typically going to be doing a dry multiplied with 1.92. Um, when you see wet here, it's going to be whatever the wet distance that is given in your AFM. Many aircraft manufacturers will give an actual wet distance and not a factored wet distance. And that's kind of important to realize. I've had some Gulfstream operators, you know, select wet. They're expecting dry 192. They're not getting that because Gulfstream publishes separate wet actual distance. That's what we have here. So if you do want to do a 192, you will right now have to use dry and factor with a 192, just like that. Um, we are looking into better ways of, of communicating this to the, the customer so it's more transparent what's actually being set here. But as of right now, if you select wet, think of it as a wet actual. And I'll actually set that back to 115. So once again, we have um, different configuration items here for the aircraft, depends on, on what the aircraft is. And at the very bottom, we have some additional performance output. Now, once again, upper right corner, summary button. If you tap on the summary button, you get a full report on your takeoff on the left and your landing on the right. And it's kind of structured with a upper and a lower half. So this is the upper half you're seeing here. Um, Below the takeoff and landing, we have engine app procedure listed as well, but the, be, the numbers are based on your actual inputs. If I scroll down a little further here, we, we show a matrix output. And the upper half here is for takeoff, the bottom for landing. So what we're doing is we're looking at every runway at that airport. And each runway, we're looking at all the engine app procedures and running the analysis and finding the maximum takeoff weight and what the limiting reason is. So you can see here some airport or some runways are impossible because of tailwind. Others are possible and they're structurally limited or they're obstacle limited. On the landing side, we do something similar, but we're looking at um, your planned winds, zero winds, and the worst uh, case of 10 knot tailwind, which is the AFM limit typically. We're showing both your, your actual and your factor distance as well, as well as any structural or really any uh, limitations here and the maximum weight as well. And once again, I can also send that to, you know, save to flight files, and it's gonna show up in my file section up here. Uh, one more back. So now I have two there. So that kind of covers the four main steps. I, I do want to real quick go to the very bottom here. You know, if you're not filing with us, I'd recommend looking into it. We have that nice blue proceed to filing button on there. It's going to pull all that information in there and allow you very quick filing, which is nice. Um, some other things we do is this pack here. So if you tap on pack, what, what it's going to do, is going to offer you to download um, charts, weather, things like that locally. Everything I'm showing you here, by the way, the calculations, they all work offline. But weather information, um, you know, if you don't have certain charts loaded locally, you want to download this before you go flying, of course. But all the calculations for runway analysis, for weight and balance, they do work offline, 100% offline. So keep that in mind. And then we have things like fuel orders. You know, you can, you can select a, an FBO where you're going. You can place an advanced fuel order and so on. Um, I'm honestly not the expert in this stuff here, so I hope I don't get any questions on that. But uh, I just wanted to point it out that we have that available as well. 
Okay, let me switch real quick here and wrap it up with uh, four more slides. So this is kind of a summary of everything I just spoke about. So we support basic operating weights. We have templates for you to get started, but again, double check the numbers, make sure it's according to your aircraft. Um, we can generate load manifests and reports for record keeping. In terms of flight planning, we, 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 we have highly accurate models. Um, if they're not accurate, please come talk to me. I'd like to learn about that. Uh, we support clu uh, cruise, climb, and descent biasing, global flight planning and filing capability. And again, I didn't show the uh, ETP and the ETOPS calculations, but we support that as well. So come to our booth for a demo. Um, in terms of performance data, so I always get the question asked, where's the data coming from? It basically, we, we've, we've gone into several, um, we've gone through the front door with manufacturers and we talked to them and said, we'd like to you know, have your data so we can offer this. So we're working with manufacturers on this here. They're providing us AFMs. In some cases, we have SCAP data, which is uh, standardized computerized aircraft performance data. It's software based. Um, and in some cases, they give us performance software as well. So the point is we are working with manufacturers to obtain the latest data, the correct data, and we create models for those. We check all the AFM um, requirements, all the constraints. So we check on brake energy limits, um, tire speed limits if they exist, VMC limits, things like that. And of course, the, run the runway length as well as the obstacle and terrain clearance. Uh, as far as aircraft configuration, if it's on a performance section five chart, we include that as well. For some aircraft, we do include some abnormal configurations out of different sections, but um, if, if your favorite one's missing, you know, talk to us, we can probably include it in the future, just that we didn't, don't always know about it because we really focus on that section five performance for the most part. Um, engine out procedure, I just wanna, you know, let you know we have a whole team working on these. We support over 6,000 custom engine out procedures right now. Um, the two screens on the right side show you a little bit. We, we've developed some very sophisticated in-house software to help us uh, come up with these. And we also use Google Earth to visualize those as well. But you know what we do is we, we take the aircraft performance and we, we take um, either SIDs or ODPs or we design our own lateral path. And that blue corridor, that's the one I was talking about. That is uh, the corridor outlined by the AC120-91A. There's some very specific uh, requirements that go into that. Not, not so much requirements, more suggestions by the FAA, but I think all the players in this field use AC120-91A to define that corridor, find all the obstacles within it, and then of course stay clear of those along the net flight path, uh, which is what everyone pretty much does here. Um, and we try, to, we try to have a combination of high maximum takeoff weight, but also reduce pilot workload. And that goes back to using SIDs and ODPs, at least to get you started off with. Uh, everyone wants to know what aircraft are supported. We currently support um, just over 70 aircraft. And uh, this is not 70 because some of these have different variants, different weight variants, things like that. Um, if your favorite OEM is not on here, it's probably because we're still talking to them to obtain data. That's kind of what this comes down to. But we have a, a pretty good coverage of um, most jets of the OEMs right now. And with that, I'm going to switch over to uh, Q&A, but I'm going to leave the screen up here for a little while longer. So any questions, let me know. Yes, in the back. Are you able to modify runway yes, you can modify runway length. Um, let me show you. Let me pick a different airport that actually has Toro to Asda, maybe. Oh, so you'd like to do the Phoenix. No, I like it. Yeah, if, if you guys have requests, just shout them out. I mean, we'll see how this goes. All right, so Phoenix, take off, um, 25 left. So we are, you sure? I mean, you can change it, yes, but are, are they have different declared distances, you know, or? No. Okay, so, so intersection departures, we don't support exactly. Um, if you change the usable length here, what you're doing is you're, you're bringing it back from the departure and then the runway towards the aircraft at where you're standing before a brake release. We do support lineup allowance. Now lineup allowance is typically for the larger jets going from the taxiway onto the runway and you lose distance behind you. That's what the lineup allowance is. Maybe a Gulfstream G650 might have a 200 foot lineup allowance. So you're effectively taking away 200 feet from the rear. You can kind of use that to your advantage if you know how much distance you have lost behind you and, and set that as your lineup allowance um, for an intersection takeoff, but it's up to you if you want to do that or not. Yes. So the, uh, the weight balance, uh, the higher 
have resolution for weight and balance, and we have for some aircraft. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> is that for, you're going to do that for all aircraft, or just the ones on that list that we saw? So in terms of what's available for weight and balance, um, every, we're, we always strive to have a weight and balance template for an aircraft that we have runway analysis available for. So we try to have a one-to-one. -one. So those are kind of married. Correct, okay. absolutely. Again, with the Gulf Streams, these large ones where you can have hundreds of layouts, we cannot model those. Now, you can come to us and say, here's my layout, and you know we can probably help you out with that. So I have a personal airplane that's a 443, and mm -hmm. I have runway performance that you guys have. You have the Ram engines, you've got all kinds of yep. stuff that you apply to that, but it doesn't have the, uh, like the alternate departures or some of these features, so I'm a little confused as to when. Gotcha. Yeah, the, the question is, when, do you, when does an engine app procedure come into play? So I think the easiest way to think of is Part 23 aircraft versus Part 25 aircraft. Um, we started off with Part 23, which are all pistons and typically single engine uh, turboprops. There are some crossover jets, lighter citations, but those are like Part 23 with special conditions. But to answer your question is, um, any piston, any single engine, obviously any single engine cannot have engine app procedures. So for those aircraft, um, we do not do the runway analysis. And what runway analysis really is, it's find your maximum takeoff weight based off of a bunch of constraints. We don't do that for your 414. We just give you the ground roll distance, the total distance, and, and the stuff you get out of the POH. So because a, a runway analysis um, doesn't really apply truly to those type of aircraft because of a certification standpoint. I think we, we could, I guess, you know, calculate a maximum takeoff weight um, based on a runway distance available, for example. But another thing is with those aircraft, you often have much more limited data in the POH than you have in an AFM for a jet. Yeah, I mean, we provide the single engine climbs uh, weight of climb that we're going to have at different weights. Yeah, so on that topic, we do provide it right now, rate of climb. Um, the, the issue right now is we provide it at the airport level only. We've had multiple requests to go higher and give you an idea of your degradation of rate, rate of climb for pistons, for turboprops, and we're actually working on that actively as well. So I'm not going to give a timeline. I, I, I try not to, but in the future, you should be able to say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm taking off 5,000 feet. I have 800 feet per minute. By 12,000 feet, I'm going to be down to zero feet per minute. So that's what we're striving for. So actually didn't mention, uh, in addition to these 70, 80 aircraft, we, uh, we do support about 150 um, pistons and turboprops. I don't know if the 414 is included. Um, catch me afterwards, I can look it up. But uh, yeah, we, we, have, we have a bunch of pistons, a bunch of twin engine pistons, a bunch of turboprops already supported, yes. And then well, finally, our 560 uh, Ultra and Encore Plus, uh, when? <laughs> it's always a question, when's the airplane supported? Um, Next year, I can tell you that one for sure. Um, with Textron, we're a little reliant on them with certain aircraft because we're using digital data that they provide to us. It's, it's additional data from the AFM a little more than what the AFM gives. So right now they are certifying Sky Courier, which is slowing them down a little bit and providing us data. But I do believe um, we're gonna start supporting more Textron aircraft early next year, including those two that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Adjustment. Yeah, great, great questions. Uh, Goldstream, for you? Uh, King Air. King Air. Asking about unbalanced field length? We don't, we don't, our operations, we don't operate what we've been given. Okay. Uh, we're limited, we limit our SFP limits by accelerate stop. So if we can't uh, depart, like the roll out limit. Okay. Stop. All right, so a couple things. Um, King Airs, we're looking at supporting those next year. I cannot say when, quite honestly. Um, from an aircraft performance point of view, um, I've noticed, uh, do you fly 200, 300? 200. 200, okay. So the 200, 300, if you open up POH, they, they provide um, what I'd call Part 23 certified data, which is your ground roll, total distance, accelerate, stop, accelerate, go. But then they also have a section with V1, VR, V2, bounce field length. So 
The thinking right now is we probably will provide both of those, but in your case, absolutely, we will show the accelerate stop information as well. We have some piston aircraft like Barons and such who have the same type of data in there and we already show accelerate stop, accelerate go individually. The reason I asked about Goldstream was, um, I'm gonna bring up a, a Goldstream real quick if there are any Goldstream pilots here. But um, what we do there is it actually supports unbalanced field length. So let me see here, get some more weight on this guy. So, so in terms of a goal stream, what you'll see is that V1 type with those three buttons there. So we, we do the section five uh, performance calculations and the goal stream allows you to change uh, V1 as needed so you can unbalance it. Right now, uh, the V1 BFL selected. So in the very header, we have a single distance of 3,700 feet, which is our balanced field length. But in certain conditions, it might make more sense to select a faster V1. And now you see on the top, we have an accelerate go and accelerate stop calculated separately. So this probably only applies to any Gulfstream pilots in the, in the room, but we have that capability for, for that group of aircraft as well to unbalance if needed. And your other question was around um, runway condition codes, I believe. So yes, we support that. We support it on several aircraft. And if I select a uh, Challenger 650 or 605, and let's go to San Antonio. So here it's really a function of the manufacturer. Um, they've been a little bit slow in providing us additional data for RCC codes, but you'll see here, in, in addition to dry and the, and the standard um, contaminated runway, Bombardier has been very proactive in pro providing us additional data. They call it OLD, operating landing distance, I think. But we, we list those here as RCC codes, and I've, I just added it to the PC-24 a couple weeks ago, but those are really the only aircraft we have, some Bombardier and the 24. I'm waiting on more data from manufacturers, but yeah, we absolutely add those when they come in. Have you seen the FAA safe that provides similar data? Absolutely, the 19001, I think, yeah. So uh, in that case, you would, you would basically have to select dry and set whatever custom factor you want to wanna do. Uh, some go up to five, I think. So you can, you can do that as well, yeah. Uh, way back. So cleaner, easy, easier engine output. Got it. So um, I, I think there are two questions here in terms of the workflow and the presentation. We have what we have here. I mean, if you like it, great. If you don't, you know, there are other providers as well. In terms of like maximum takeoff weight calculations. Um, Yes, we have done comparisons there, obviously, and, and basically we're all in the same range. It's not always gonna be exact. You, you'll never really compare our product with another product and always get the exact numbers. The reason, multitude reasons, for one, that, that obstacle corridor selection might be a little different, whatnot. They may have a close-in obstacle that we don't have or vice versa. But yeah, we have done those, done those comparisons. They are all very similar. In terms of the workflow of presentation, it's really your choice. Um, I don't know if that answered your question or not, but. All right, yes, sir. I'm, I'm waiting on that from Textron. Those are literally the next three aircraft they're supposed to provide us. Um, CJ, CJ, Citation Jet, CJ1, CJ1 Plus, yeah. So unfortunately, again, we're, we're living on their time schedule there. Uh, I would not do that, no, because the performance is different enough where you do not want to use a different one. Um, I'm also adding the Tamarack winglet equipped ones. Um, I think I just added CJ2 Plus recently and CJ2 as well. So we, we will be adding more of the Tamarack winglet equipped. Now their performance is identical. Um, I spoke to the Tamarack engineers and, and they use the, the stock citation performance data from, from runway point of view, not from flight planning, but yeah. No, you can turn on and off obstacles altogether, but we make it very difficult because the whole idea is not to do that. So we have that toggle switch obstacle analysis. We say, do you really want to do this? Um, and then if you disable it, you're going to have this permanent yellow banner just reminding you. Yeah, you know, the, the standard departures are not, they don't take into account any of the obstacles that are listed. 
Yeah, but you're talking standard departure from Terp's point of view, right? Yeah, so uh, in other words, coming out of Aspen or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, the big picture is more important than the pros and cons. Got it. So we use Brand X and they have a, a switch to shut off the pros and cons. Because on one airport we fly out of, one of the obstacles happens to be the, the beacon. Yeah. And we're not going to hit the beacon. Right. right. But it falls within that plane and the FAA says, oh, they have to use it. Correct. So So for us, it's all or nothing switch right now. Um, having said that, our, our engine out design team, they actually consider these if, when, when pods provide us feedback, like, hey, there's something not working, we look at that, we find the beacon, and we will actually you know, remove it in that case because we, we all understand a beacon's not gonna cause much issue here. So we, we're quite conservative about that, of course, too, but um, we, we try to you know, research each and individual case for a departure and see, does this really make sense? That's what's here or not. Well, we, we have them put that switch in for us because you know, like going, even going out of Cambridge, you know, mm -hmm. there's that one hill out there out in the water and we're able to disable that. So I'm curious, what, what um, do, you, do you know how far out they switch it off? You say close in obstacles. Are we talking the first 2,000 yeah, so feet? or anything that, that's not listed, but okay, so anything that's listed on the, the approach plane, yep. where they say, oh, plus you have a tree. Tree, a yeah. Line, okay. They can turn that off and keep it separate, and that way the data... I mean, per personally, as a performance engineer, I, would, I shudder a little bit, quite honestly, because it, it can matter. You know, this this is kind of important to consider these things. I mean, there's a warning too, but okay. we know that, hey, in this case, it's the control tower at this other airport. There's one telephone pole that's right. out there, and you know, everybody knows it's there, so we would go slightly to the right if it lost a warning. So what I'm saying is that it gives us the flexibility to have uh, a standard every time rather than say, well, we can't use this here. Because right. We've never operated where we've been going for 15 years. Yeah. Right now it's all or nothing with us. So that's that's how it is, I'm afraid. Uh, okay, let me, blue shirt. Uh, as far as the loading goes, is it possible to trade off the same thing off? Great question. <laughs> We will, we will in a little bit. So, so that's probably the number one feedback. Uh, do you have takeoff stab trim setting? Uh, we obviously have a lot of that times a percent MEC goes into that calculation and we are working on that actively. Uh, it's a one piece missing here right now, but, but it will happen sooner than later, I think. Question? The question is about calculating a takeoff um, stabilizer trim setting for, for jets, you know, 6.8 or whatever. Um, so we are working on that, yes, it will happen. Way back. So I know we, inter well, shoot, um, I'm the wrong person to ask actually. I I'd recommend coming to the booth in terms of what we integrate with in terms of the APIs and scheduling because I'm not up to speed on that. Um, sorry, can't answer that one. Yes? Can you override the fuel capacity in case of you cannot, um, you cannot override the fuel capacity, no, because we, we have those set in the model. You'd have to create your own model for that. Uh, no plans right now. <laughs> Anyone else? Yep. Does the performance profile and runway analysis from your knowledge become more integrated? Is it possible once those profiles are all built to push them out to all the pilot staff so each pilot doesn't have to individually build that? Profile? Right. So the, the question is can, can there be an administrator? to create everything and push out to the pilots and even lock them away? The answer is yes, we, we support that already. So it really depends on how, you, uh, you, you know, we would set you up as an organization, organization with an administrator, maybe a group of people, and then all the pilots and the crews, and, and you have control as an administrator, but it's locked away otherwise. Um, you don't have control over the runway analysis right now anyway. You, you do in terms of the setup of defaults, like I showed you, but that's about it. But yeah, that's supported. Anyone else? All right, well, thank you for your time. Appreciate it.